Okay, um, just by a show of hands, who has heard of or uh, worked with Prawn at some point? Okay, quite a bit of you, great. Yesterday I was supposed to be giving a talk on this in the main room, but uh, I destroyed my slides about 30 seconds before my talk. <laughs> uh, I've now learned the value of Apple X from my computer, and uh, <laughs> these were the goals that I was going to go over. Now, when I had first proposed this talk, I was hoping to have Pond 1.0 almost ready for this conference. Uh, and unfortunately, we're nowhere near there, but what we are close to is deciding what's going to be in that and setting a timeline for that sort of thing. Now, Pron started off as basically a project in which lots of people donated to me because I asked them to support me to do open source. I decided to do PDFs because that's what the community seemed like they really wanted most. And during that time, I was doing regular releases at least once a month, maybe more frequently. But then after I had to go back to work, things have been dying down, and it's been five months since we've had an official stable release of Pron, even though we've been writing code all that time, which is bad of course. But let me just quickly run through these goals. We want to have a high level interface for basic reports. And so this hits us several goals at once. You can see there that that's just using a font that's a uh, true type font and then rendering some UTF-8 text. And that's all you need to do if you use fonts for basic reports. Uh, if anyone saw my RubyConf 2008 talk, which is available on Concrete, I also reverse engineered the GitHub invoices that they send out to you guys, the PDFs, if you, and that took like maybe 20, 25 lines of code. So Pron is good for basic stuff. It's fast. It does all of that. It's also the fastest pure Ruby PDF implementation with its feature set. If you go to that URL, you'll see that if you're not dealing with pure Ruby, uh, Pron's not that fast. But as compared to something like Argos. But as compared to something like PDF Writer, it's a hell of a lot faster. We also don't rely on any third party packages, either C extensions or any other Zen. Everything was written by the people who are working on Prod. Which, if you know anything about PDF, that was a lot of work. We're even doing things as low level as the font uh, parsing and processing and binary stuff and all of that. So, our goal is to keep that, and as a result, we run on MRI, we run on YARV, we run on Rubinius, JRuby, and RackRuby, 04, and pretty much probably everywhere. Internationalization is a top priority. We have baked in support for Unicode. If you're running on Ruby 1.9, it will transcode to you so long as you have Unicode, as long as your encoding works with Unicode. And we plan to support Ruby 1.86 and Ruby 1.9 and, and every <coughs> subsequent release of Ruby 1.9 all the way up to the 1.0 release. Our very first release had this. We were one of the first libraries to actually actively support Ruby 1.9 and we'll continue to do that moving forward with the project. We may eventually drop Ruby 1.8 support, but don't worry, it won't be anytime soon. We also want to replace PDF Writer and I would like to know how many of you are, have used or are using PDF Writer for something? Okay, so how many of you have migrated everything that you could over to Prod? Not that many. So PDF Writer, the biggest problem is one, that it's slow, and two, that it's buggy. If we made you an API compatibility layer that basically allows you to drop in for all the functionality we have in Prod now, would you use that? Yes? Okay, so that will be on the roadmap for 1.0. Uh, so, another thing is that we want to have a readable and hackable core implementation. And if you look in my book, Ruby Best Practices, I use a lot of the example. I was working on a problem while I was writing the book, and the design in a lot of places is really quite good. And the fact that we've had over 40 contributors to something as low level as a PDF generation library, it, that makes me feel like we've done a good job there. But there are certainly areas that are scary, and right now, I don't know how many people are familiar with the PDF format, but it's got a 1,300 page specification. So uh, that's a little bit scary. And it actually sort of implements its own object system. So you're basically building pointers and things like that. That part of Prod sucks really, really bad. And that's why we can't do things like page one of 10 because we can't go backwards. Uh, 
we basically are continuously moving a pointer across all of our pages, and that is bad. We also can't do things like group together a bunch of stuff and say, if it's just on the page, put it there, otherwise move it to the next page. But last night and throughout the rest of the day today, we are working on replacing that object system, and as of 1.0, <coughs> you will certainly have a way to do all of that stuff. And you may have a way to do it in the next few weeks if everything goes well. So that's basically my talk. I don't know if I have any more time at all to take questions. One minute? OK. Does anyone have a question? All right. Oh, well, can't talk about that until I hear about it. But, but my book has, in the contract, it will definitely be open source by March 15th. We're trying to get it done sooner, but I can't give any more detail than that. But the book may be available for free sooner than March 15th, so take a look for that. Okay, so anything else? And then uh, here, we're going to be working on object systems until we leave. So yeah, if anyone wants to see me, and ask questions about Prawn or work on Prawn, just let me know. Okay, thank you everybody. <laughs>